Hey AIMC, today I'll be presenting our research paper called Vivace, Web Application for Real-Time Feedback on Piano Performance. This paper was authored by myself, Jeremy Lee, Carmen Echella, and Helene Camille Crancourt. This paper is an exploration of the role that interactive technology can have in the ways that performers practice their musical instruments. We can see that visual technology that aids musicians have become more and more prevalent with the advent of apps like Simply Piano and Flowkey. These apps in particular analyze the correctness of a performer's practice session. In other words, whether they hit the correct notes at a given tempo. In a similar vein, we developed a web application called Vivace that differs from these apps by analyzing the dynamics and expression of a musical performance in real time. In doing this, we hope to find the correct target audience for a technology that focuses on real-time expressive feedback and also the optimal types of feedback a user of such technology would want. The motivation of this paper at a high level is to determine the best method for modeling expressivity to display useful feedback to a performer in real time. Expressivity is a key aspect of performance, but is typ typically difficult to model as it is an all-encompassing term for many different dimensions of performance. Typically, the process for improving expressivity involves aural modeling, which in easier terms is learning from examples provided by a teacher. In order to model expressivity, we took this idea of aural modeling to indicate that it, uh, imitative learning can be extended to learning expressivity. In doing so, we had to make some assumptions about the potential best dimensions by which expressive, expressiveness can be defined. For piano performance, we found that tempo and volume were two features that were found to capture much of a pianist's playing style and expressivity. These features were also interesting to explore as no other application that we know of provides automatic feedback on these two particular features for piano performance evaluation. To build an interface to easily distribute and build, we designed a web application that streams microphone data to a Python backend server, which does analysis in real time and sends back relevant feedback. The Python server is sourced with tempo and volume segments from a database of performances uh, by great pianists. We then compare the tempo and volume of the music being streamed from the browser to those of the corresponding song in the database. I'd like to dive a bit deeper into the tempo function that we ended up using. The function is based on the function used in the Librosa Python library that you may be familiar with. The general idea is that the function computes a tempogram, which is analogous to the spectrogram in the time domain. We encountered several challenges with using this function, the first being that window size has a significant impact on the accuracy of the tempo prediction. Therefore, there seems to be a trade-off between the responsiveness of the application, which is how frequently the application updates, um, and the accuracy of the application. To find the optimal window size, we followed these steps. First, we generated a set of random signals of 30 seconds, which, in which onsets that occur at random intervals uh, become corresponded with a CSV of tempo values, which are the ground truth values for tempo. We run this database of signals on three variations of the tempo function and determine the best one by comparing it to the ground truth CSV. The three variations are a tempo function with no overlaps, one with a median filter, and one with overlapping windows. We found that the overlapping window function resulted in the best, best performance. For consistency, we use the same strategy of computing volume on overlapping windows for the volume function as well. The definition for volume was given by the decibel formula. We built the web application in the framework React.js with a visualization library called Victory.js. The application was designed to stream audio packets from the browser to the backend application, which is a Python server. 
The server accepts audio packets through a socket endpoint, um, which essentially collects data until it meets the window size length, then computes and emits data to the front end, and then wipes out about two thirds of the data that was previously in the buffer. This process continues until the user clicks stop. For our experiments, we ended up deploying Vivace to AWS and distributed the application to 10 total pianists. We then surveyed each of the 10 students for feedback on the application with the Google form. The form goes over the usefulness of the application, users' personal experience in music, as well as any other general feedback they may have. The hope of this survey is, was to find the kind of users that this app can benefit from as well as whether this method of visualization was helpful. We found that 70% of the users were advanced players, with them having played for more than 10 years. The remaining users played for about five to 10 years. As you can see here with the charts, there, is, there seems to be a proportional relationship between the number of years played and the usefulness and ease of use of the application. The users, the users of the application on average said that they thought the application was geared more towards advanced players. We found that beginner and intermediate players needed more detailed feedback on technical aspects of playing, like fingering or articulation. Advanced players, however, were able to adjust their playing to the feedback given, but stated that the application was rather hard to keep track of while playing, suggesting the need for a more at a glance information, which is more actionable than plotting volume and tempo coordinates. To, to reiterate our goals for this paper, we wanted to determine the correct types of real-time performance tools that can help performers practice. Then, we wanted to determine the best visualizations of real-time feedback that can help these types of users. We learned that advanced players could benefit most from the real-time feedback about expressiveness, but could do so better with more cursory information than what we ended up creating. Beginner players can also benefit from a more detailed analysis of techniques, which may be more suited for teachers.